Well, uh, the U.S. is more than six years into its economic recovery, but first quarter GDP contracted by nearly 3%. That's the steepest amount since 2009. So what does America need to do to pick up the pace of growth? Our next guest has a five-step plan. He says will help the U.S. regain its economic leadership. Joining me now, Nick Adams, author of the new book, The American Boomerang, How the World's Greatest Turnaround Nation Will Do It Again. So you're Australian. You wrote a book about the U.S. economy. Yes, ma'am. You say that the debt that we are carrying right now as a nation is, an, is a weight on our ankles. Cheryl, I think it was James Madison that said that he went by the principle that a public debt is a public curse. And I go by the exact same principle. If, let's put it into perspective, let's put the American debt into perspective. If you'd started a business the day that Jesus was born and lost a million dollars every single year, you'd still be in a better financial position than the American government. That's how bad it is. And you're right, debt is weighed around your ankles. A strained economic power is a strained power overall. And the last thing we want is for America to be a strained power in the world. Well, what do you, now what do you think is the, is the problem? Because one of the things that you've done is, is you've studied, even though you're Australian, you've studied the U.S. economy for years. I mean, what do you think that other nations could learn from the U.S. economy? Because many Americans now are very down on whether it's the, you know, the GDP, which is not the wage, wage issues that we're seeing, concerns about inflation. What, can, what does the Australian economy in particular learn from us? Absolutely. Well, look, there, you've got 17 trillion in debt, 47 million people are on food stamps, 22 million people work for the government. I mean, that's the entire population of Australia. That's far too many. Uh, you know, all of the figures are, are terrible. Poverty is on the rise income for working families is falling. Uh, and all of these things need to be corrected. And America, Cheryl, has always been the economic engine of the world for as long as we can go back and remember. There's so much to learn from America. It's all about lower taxes. It's about government getting out of the way and allowing businesses to thrive. All right, so you've got a five-point recovery plan for us. Yeah. Uh, and you say that the, the step one is spare the American people and create a business-friendly environment. Cut taxes, basically. Absolutely. That's the first and biggest message. Yeah. Yes, without a doubt. I mean, you need to cut taxes. You need to stop spending like a drunken sailor. Mm -hmm. You need to... That's coming uh, from an Australian. You're killing me right well, now. Well, I know, but <laughs> I, it's so important that we get America strong because Australia benefits when America's strong, Cheryl. I mean, the entire world does. So, I mean, it's, it's absolutely pivotal that, that we get this right. Just look at the red states. Look at the red states with, with red governors, uh, whether it's Texas, Wisconsin, Ohio, Florida, where taxes are low, spending is under control, and jobs are on the rise. That's the model America needs to do. If America can become like Texas and not like California, then the economic woes will go. You say that we should cut the red and green tape and deregulate, certainly, spur hiring, and then you also say, uh, again, stop spending so much money and get debt under control. But, you know, our central bank and central banks around the world, we should point out here, this has been the plan overall, whether it's the U.S. or Europe, I'm not so sure about Australia, you know, this is what is kind of brought us out of the brink of what could have been a, a depression. Look, it's not easy, Cheryl. I don't for one second say that it's easy, but it needs to be done. And what America has to do, I believe, is embrace those economic values that it has always embraced, that has seen it become the powerhouse of the world. It needs to exploit the energy resources directly under its feet, whether we're talking about untapped uh, oil reserves, whether we're talking about natural gas, whether we're talking about shale oil, all of those things. America needs to become energy independent. That'll benefit America not only financially but also foreign policy wise. So there are so many things and, and quite frankly President Obama's economic policies, many of them would make a Soviet central plan a blush. <laughs> and uh, you know it's, it's really unfortunate that America has pursued this European welfare state type mentality and approach, the safety net has become a hammock and America is waning because the entitlement state is waxing. Well, but you could also, I mean, that's, that's part of the fact that we have though, a democratic president in, in place right now and, and we have those values that are being You're imposed exactly on right. the market. The left are not interested in creating wealth, Cheryl. They're interested in erasing inequality and they don't like capitalism because they don't like the painful reality that mm -hmm. capitalism delivers winners and losers. Nick Adams, the book American Boomerang, How the World's Greatest Turnaround Nation Will Do It Again and uh, from the, you know, Australia to here. Thank you, Nick. Cheryl Kastani, always a pleasure. All right, thank you.